Hello everyone, in today's DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna show you my quick and easy process for getting a cinematic Sony S-Log3 or really any log profile color grade. We're gonna go from this right here to this. And it's going to be a very easy and simple process to follow. So be sure to watch all the way through and we'll just go step by step starting now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do first is I'm gonna get rid of all of my nodes here and go back to square one with this clip. This is a S-Log3 clip that I captured a little while ago with my Sony A7S III. And uh, for example purposes today, I've actually bypassed my uh, color management tools inside of DaVinci Resolve that would have automatically converted this to Rec. 709. So we're just gonna go through that process real quick. So I'm gonna do uh, Alt S on my keyboard to add a serial node. From here, we're gonna go ahead and click and drag color space transform. We're gonna search for our respective input gamma, which in this case is the Sony S Gamut 3 dot cine. Okay, so that's gonna get some of our colors back. Now to get our contrast back, we're gonna to go to the input gamma. So, or excuse me, input color space is the S, uh, S log 3 dot cine. Input gamma is the Sony S log 3 log three profile right here. And then the output color space is going to be rec 709. That's the color space that I'm working in. And the output gamma, we're gonna go to, we're gonna type in rec 709, but just go to gamma 2.6. And that's going to, what that's going to do is that's going to spread all of the details and colors of the image as best we can um, onto our new uh, workplace, which is gonna be my rec 709 workspace. Now, you can see how the image is distributed down here in my scopes, and that's from brightest to darkest. So it's all still kind of in the middle. So we still have some work to do before we do kind of the cinematic grade, right? We still have a little bit of correction to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add Alt-S, another serial node. Now this is going to be our, the first one was our color space transform, and the next one I'm going to go ahead and label as our correction node, okay? So from here, we're going to select this. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually just adjust the offset and bring that brightness way back down to manage it to more of a manageable level. So uh, you typically, um, there may be some scenarios where you do want uh, your scopes to spread across the entire spectrum here of uh, luminance, I believe is what that is. But in our case today, we actually don't want that because the brightest part of the image is the dress and there's no blown out highlights or anything in the dress. Uh, so we don't need to spread that image all the way across. If we were to do that, it would look uh, too overexposed. It would be too bright. So we're not going to do that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, just use my offset to make sure that I have a good kind of uh, baseline for our bright overall brightness of the image. Then from here, I'm gonna go to my curves, my custom curves, make sure editable splines is selected. And I'm just going to edit the shadows. So I'm going to click this bottom corner here and I'm going to grab the spline and I'm going to bring those shadows down until it, it's at a point where I like the way it looks. And that looks really good to me. So you can see we already have a very, very good image, almost even deliverable if we're doing just like a, a wedding film where we wanted it to look very natural and very um, you know, true to life. But our purpose today is to do a cinematic grade. So let's jump into that next. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add another serial node here and I'm gonna do some color adjustments. So let's go to our color warper. And one thing that I like to do is select the yellows, greens, and blue greens and desaturate them. So we're gonna desaturate them just a bit like that, okay? Now, what that does is that takes the yellows and greens a little bit down and out of the image, but it leaves us with a little bit too much pink in the skin tones. So to mitigate that, we're going to deselect, um, or we're gonna deselect these and then select the uh, orange and red area, kind of the red area of the of the color warper. We're gonna bring some yellows back into the skin tone, just like that. 
Okay. Now this isn't a scientific, like professional Hollywood style grade. This is just me getting it to look the way I want it to look. So we're going to come here to color management. So that's our color management node. Okay. So now that we've kind of managed our colors and got them where we want them. So we can kind of deselect this and you can see the difference here. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring out our subject as best as we can and create a little bit of color contrast. And we're going to do more for color contrast here in a second. So let's do another node, Alt S. Now this node, we're going to use one of my new favorite features, which is the magic mask. And we're going to do object. Now we could do person detection, but the person mask, I still have a few issues with. It doesn't work perfectly. My object mask, I've tend to got better results with. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the middle of the clip and we're going to make sure that we have object mask selected and the plus uh, selector. And we're going to draw inside right here to create our mask. And we'll let it process. It'll take a second to process. Oh, there it goes. That was actually a little faster than I thought it would be. Okay. And you may have to select the mask overlay to make sure that we can see what we're dealing with here. Now, from here, I'm actually going to increase the blur radius to soften up the edges because it's just a, we're doing this for grading purposes. We're not actually trying to mask, mask her out and use it as like a blank template. We're just doing it for, for color grading purposes. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then our clean black and clean white is just the negative and positive space um, for uh, moving it in and out. You can see here when I reduce the clean or increase the clean white, my mask expands and then clean, bla clean black vice versa. Okay, so we have a pretty good selection here and I'm not gonna go too much into detail. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect for our purposes today. So what I'm gonna do here is, now that I have that selected, before I track it, because uh, you wanna make sure you have your selections and everything done before you track it, because if you make a change to your selection or make changes to the mask after you've done your, select, uh, your tracking, it may delete your tracking, you have to retrack it. So to save time, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to invert this mask because we want everything else selected other than her. So now that we have that selected, we're going to go ahead and track forward and backward. And it's gonna go ahead and do its thing. It'll take a couple of minutes, but uh, I'll just go ahead and skip ahead as soon as it's done. Okay, it looks like my mask tracking is done and it's done a great job here isolating my subject. So now, uh, so that I don't have to deal with my lines still being in my image. I'm going to deselect my um, the qualifier in my viewer and I'm also going to deselect the mask overlay here so that we can just see what we're affecting. Now this is uh, where we're going to create more color contrast. So my subject um, has just a nice soft orange skin like skin tones. And what we want to do is we want to further bring that out from the image. And that includes separating it from the grass in the background. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, now that I have this mask selected, any changes I make are only going to take effect to the background, which is really, really handy. So I'm going to go ahead and come to my lift, which is kind of my blacks and my shadows. And I'm going to decrease the red. So if I increase the reds, then that actually makes the background look more like the skin and it reduces color contrast, but we want to increase the color contrast. And so we're going to go ahead and reduce it by about 0 0.03 points or so. We don't want to overdo it. We want it to be subtle. Okay. And now you can see immediately that has a very, very, a much better effect on our image. Let's go ahead and add one more serial node. And this last node, I'm just going to do a couple of kind of just final adjustments. So to do this, what I'm going to go ahead and do is probably just increase my highlights just a bit like this and even decrease my shadows a bit more just to add a little bit more contrast to the image. And, and of course I'm watching my scopes, making sure that the dress, the highlights of the image aren't getting too high um, and clipping. So this is already looking much, much, much better. And I think I actually might be done with this clip. So you can see here that it looks really good. So before and after, just like that. So 
uh, that's pretty much it. That's my workflow for creating uh, more of a cinematic color grade, right? Something that that's a little more stylized, really, you know, push the colors really hard and create a lot of color contrast in the image, make it uh, really pop. So if you like this video, I'd really appreciate if you like and subscribe for more tutorials um, about uh, anything creator related or DaVinci Resolve. I love creating these videos. So if you have any more uh, questions, uh, leave it in the comment below. I try to answer all the comments that come into my videos. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.